Hi, this is Simon Obstel. I hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this Eye of Sauron effect. Now there's a great deal involved in this particular project, and in this first part, we are simply going to be looking at creating the eye itself. In a subsequent part, we're going to be looking at some of the other aspects of the scene. So let's make a start. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a project in which I create a fire element that we can use to composite in our final scene. So to do that, let's set up our project. I'm going to make this 1920 square. So I'm going to change the height to 1920. I'm going to make my duration 20 seconds. Now my final project is only going to be 10 seconds long, but I want a bit of extra to play with in case we want to speed up this element or adjust its timing. So 20 seconds for that. And 24 frames a second is fine for the frame rate. So let's come and add a clouds generator to this. And let's set it up. Horizontal scale of eight and a vertical scale of 24. Then let's come to the offset. Let's select the Y, add parameter behavior rate, and let's set that rate to 0.1. So that's giving us that effect. Next, what I want to do is I want to duplicate these clouds. So right click, duplicate, and I'm going to add filters, distortion, bump map. And I'm going to use the lower clouds as the bump map source, and we can turn that off. So let's have a direction of 45 degrees and an amount of 0.15. And that gives us something that looks like this. And I'm just going to select that direction and parameter behavior wriggle. Let's set that amount to 15. The apply mode to add and subtract. Let's set the frequency down to 0.3 and the noisiness down to zero. That's just going to give us a little bit more interesting movement in there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the rectangle mask and just very roughly draw a mask across my image like that. Let's open up the size for the mask. Let's have a width of 720 and a height of 640. And let's come to its position, center it out on X and on Y we'll have negative 540. And then let's do the thing that's going to make this look like radiating fire. And that's to select the master group there, and we'll come to filters, distortion, and we'll look for polar. And you'll see we've now got the fire radiating out from the, from the center. So let's just adjust this mask a bit so we've got better edges. Come back down to it, let's open it up and set a feather of negative 200. And what I also want to do is, with it selected, come to Filters, Stylize, Crystallize. I'm going to set that size up to 30 and the speed to 1.5. And what that's done, I think you can see it just sort of break up the edges of that. So we've got a more natural looking edge. It's less obvious that it's a circle or a section of a circle. And what we're also going to do is add a Gaussian Blur, so Blur. Gaussian Blur, let's set that amount to about 30. And there's just one final thing I need to do, and that's to adjust the clouds here and open up the gradient editor. Let's click on the opacity bar at the top there to make a new tab and drag it all the way to the right. And this one on the left here, select it and set its opacity to zero. And that's going to give us transparency like that. So now we can export this. So we're going to come to Share, Export Movie. We want to select ProRes 444 as the codec in order that we can keep that transparency. And then you just want to save it out to somewhere that you can find it again. So I've made this folder called Elements and I've called it Fire A and hit Save in order to render. So in my version of this project, I made several different 
uh, instances of this and render them out separately. And what I would do is come in and just adjust the, the scale of the clouds generator, doing the same for both the displacement map and the clouds itself. So just adjust these horizontal and vertical scale values till you get some different results. So for example, if we went for 16 and 32 and did the same thing on here, it's giving us this more sort of diffuse fire and that's, that can be useful. And, and the, more, the more different elements you have, the, the, the better this is going to look. So now we can move on and create our master project. And so this time I'm going to go for 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second and 10 seconds duration. And then we're going to come to import and we're going to import that rendered element that we've created. So bring that in and I'm just going to scale it down just a bit to something like that. And let's set its blend mode to screen. So now we're just going to duplicate this and offset it and do various things to, to, to make our basic eye shape. So let's duplicate it one time. And one of the things I'm going to do is open up the timing here. And I'm going to have some that are running forward and some that are running backwards. Uh, so let's click that button. And then I'm going to just rotate that element like that. I'm just going to leave the scale at the moment, but I'm going to come, come back and, and change the scale later on, and you'll see why. So let's just duplicate this. Again, let's rotate it around. Let's maybe just adjust the timing by dragging the mini timeline there. Let's duplicate it again. Let's uncheck reverse and let's rotate it. Do it one more time, a bit more rotation. Come to there, enable the reverse button again. So overall, we've got this effect. So let's call this eyeball or something. And then let's duplicate it. So right click, duplicate. And let's call this iris because we want this to be the center of the eye. And then let's select all these elements in the iris group here. And let's adjust their scale down to something like 20. Maybe that's a bit too small. Let's, let's come up again, maybe 25, maybe even... No, 30 is going to be good. So now we've got an iris in the middle like that. And another thing we can, we can do is we can come to these elements in the eyeball group and just reduce their opacity. Let's go for something like 65. So just so the iris stands out a little bit more in relation to the other elements. So now I want us to make a new group right at the top here, object new group. And I'm going to put everything into it. And inside that group, I'm going to add generators color solid. Just going to make this 3000 by 3000. Make the color black. Come to properties and I'm going to set the blend mode to screen and the opacity to one because we don't actually want to see this. This is going to be a control object and I'm going to put it at the back of the group like that. So now I'm going to select this group. Let's call this I and we're going to come to filters, distortion and we're going to select bulge and then I'm just going to turn on the overlays. We just want to increase that amount so it's covering the whole eye and so something like 425 is good. And now I want you to look what happens if I select my color solid there, layer there. I'm going to call it control. And then we adjust its X position. And you see we've got this very interesting effect of the eye moving. And that's what's going to control our animation. So we're doing really quite a lot of work with that simple filter. So let's reset that. So next I want to create the pupil, the sort of lizard slit of the eye. So at the top of this group here, just above Aris, I'm going to make a new group and let's call this Matt. And then I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can get to the center of our image. And I'm going to turn on the overlays and the grid. So I've got a fairly small grid here. Uh, in the preferences, I think I've set it up as sort of 50 pixels, something like that. So let's click here at the top. Let's click and drag there. Let's uh, click down here. Click and drag here and close it up. Uh, let's set up, set it, reset its position. Let's come to the geometry 
And let's just tidy it up a little bit. So that point is zero, this one 175, this one let's go for 25, this one zero, this one zero, this one negative 175, this one negative 25, and this one zero. So that's just giving us some, a tidy, accurate shape there. And, you know, we could just go in and adjust those Bezier handles precisely to the grid like that. Make sure it's vertical. And so it's snapping to those grid points and that makes it completely uniform or as close as we can get it. So let's now set the style of this to fill no outline and we can turn it off. And what we're going to do is select that iris group there, right click, add image mask, and we'll use that Bezier shape as the matte source. And then we want to invert the mask like that. And then we can copy that mask onto the eyeball. So hold down the auto option key, drag it onto the eyeball group like that. And we've got our slitty cutout. Now this is all looking much too perfect. So what we're going to do is select that Bezier shape. We're going to come to filters and we're going to look for crystallize again. Let's set the speed down to 0.4. You can see that's just roughened up the edges of that. So it's, it's more organic looking. And then we'll also just add very quickly a Gaussian blur. And let's set that amount to 10. So what I think I'm going to do here is, is in this eyeball group, I think those are much too opaque. So I'm going to set their opacity down to about 30. So at the moment, we've got a round eye, and obviously we don't want that. So the trick to sorting that out is to come into this eyeball group and to do a bit of scaling and rotating and repositioning of these different elements till we've got something that more closely resembles an eye. I'll probably speed this up, I'll, I'll get you started, but, but you see I'm squashing down the verticals a bit and maybe moving out the horizontals and this sort of thing basically, uh, just to, to get a much more eye-like shape. So that's a, a little bit more like it. Hopefully I'll spend a lot more time on it than I've just done there. And also you'll probably want to just add some extra layers to this fire. So let me just duplicate one of these. And again, just, just think about just reducing those, the opacity of, of any new layer that you add. So you can fill out some of the areas that you're not happy with just by duplicating. Just create a nice dense effect. So you get the overall idea. So. For the end of this first part of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is show you how to colorize this effect. So first of all, let's select the iris and come to color levels. Let's open up the blue and let's drag this value here down like so. Let's do the same with the green, but not quite so much. We have a much more red type of effect like that. What we need to do is having applied that levels control, we need to change the blend mode back to screen because it switches to normal when you add an effect like that. So I'm going to copy that levels onto the eyeball by holding down the Alt or Option key and dragging it on like that. And in this case, we could reduce the blue even more, reduce the green even more. So we've got this differentiation between the, the iris and the rest of the eye. So there you go, that's part one of the tutorial. There's plenty more to come in the next part, and I hope you can join me for that. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and stay safe.